going live. All right. I believe we are live now. Nice. So wait a couple minutes. All right. Let's do our intro. So thank you everyone for coming to our live stream. Today we're going to talk about Dart Frog, which is an experimental for now, minimalistic backend framework for Dart created by our team at Very Good Ventures. If you're here, you might already know who we are, but in case you don't, I'll give a little background on VGB. So Very Good Ventures is a Flutter app development consultancy. We've worked on many Flutter apps um, since opening our doors four years ago. Some of these apps you probably know or have seen like Hamilton, Betterment, most recently IO Pinball. Um, you can find out more about VGV at our website, which is verygood.ventures. I'll put it up on the screen here in case you want to take a look. All right, so you can find many things there, including blogs, case studies of our work, and even open job postings, so check it out. So I'm Scarlett. I'm on the marketing team at Very Good Ventures. Also with me are Hainan and Felix, who are going to be doing the live stream today. Um, they're from the open source and tooling team at VGB. So do you two want to give some info about yourselves? Brief intros. Okay. Yeah, I guess I, I start. Uh, my name is Hannah. I just started recently at VGV. I'm uh, here. I'm an open source engineer and I work with uh, Flutter since, uh, since 2018 or since a long time ago. And uh, yes, I really love open source and let's go. Let's Let's go for it. Awesome. And I'm Felix. I'm also on the open source and tooling team at BGV um, and really excited. I think this is our second live stream now. So second uh, official live stream. Yeah, yeah. Excited to keep it up. Uh, and thanks, everyone, again for joining. Well, so Felix and Hanan are going to walk us through a demo of Dart Frog. Um, to anyone watching in the audience, feel free to ask any questions in the live chat. We'll try to get to those as soon as possible throughout the live stream as it makes sense. So definitely add in your questions or comments and we'll try to address them. So Hannah and Felix, take it away. Awesome. Good. I guess I'm sharing my screen already. Yeah, let's yes, get started. Yes, I am. <laughs> Good. Let's get started. Dart Frog. Amazing. So today the goal is, Felix? Yeah, the goal is, <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us, the goal is <laughs> to basically, uh, let's let's take a quick look at what is this dart frog thing that we've been tweeting about with these dart frog emojis on Twitter. Uh, let's take a look at, like, um, why, why does it exist? How can you get started? What can you do with it? Again, as uh, Scarlett mentioned, this is still experimental, so things will break. I expect things will not work for uh, certain cases, so, like, that's why everything's experimental. Don't build your next production backend using this um but hopefully if uh, the community is excited about it and uh, we continue to invest time and resources into it we can uh, eventually have it leave that experimental stage um but yeah as of now definitely we really appreciate everyone tuning in and encourage everyone to try this uh, and give us your feedback but keep in mind it is experimental so let's jump into what it is like Hannah is sharing here on pub.dev this is the a core package. There's a couple of packages that are part of this Dart Frog ecosystem. So the one that you'd probably be using as a developer is the one that we have open right now in pub.dev. It's just Dart Frog. Um, and there's also a CLI package, which you'll be looking at shortly. And then there's a third package called Dart Frog Gen, which you probably don't really have to worry about, but that's what's doing all of the code generation um, behind the scenes. So yeah, I think um, before we jump into the code, uh, again, like just to reiterate what is Dart Frog, it's meant to be a minimalistic backend framework for Dart. It's built on top of Shelf, um, and it has taken inspiration from many different uh, tools out there, including Svelte Kit, Remix, Next.js, Express.js, uh, lots of other ones that I probably won't even mention. Um, and yeah, we're really excited about what we can build and try to take Dart into the backend uh, as other people have done in the past. Um, so yeah, this is kind of VGV's spin on things. So I guess we can just get started then. Um, so yes. hang on, you want to switch over to your terminal and we can take a look at how to install the CLI. Maybe it would Amazing. be the first step. Yeah, so to get started, let's just go for the, the way we activate global stuff. Dash global global. Wait, and uh, it's going to be like the, the CLI that we want to activate, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. 
right probe or global activate uh activate and then just dart frog cli yeah dart frog cli perfect and, uh, yeah so we probably have now the dart frog command yeah good awesome so, we're on the right yeah, track here. <laughs> amazing so <laughs> yeah, so I guess first thing you can always do uh, is, yeah, exactly. Verify that your command line um, installation went properly by just typing dartfrog in your CLI. Uh, you can also check the version that you have of dartfrog CLI, which might be handy if you're opening bugs or uh, issues. Uh, it's always nice to include the version. Um, and probably the first place that we'll start is with the create command, because that will help us generate a brand new project. Good. Art frog create. Um, we need a name. What do you I want to call it? <laughs> um, you don't want to ask me about that. <laughs> Why don't we call it? Uh, since we uh, eventually will try to create like a simple uh, unicorn name generator, we can just call it like unicorn name generator or something. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Uh, or you can also uh, call it something boring like my server example, dart frog example. Doesn't really matter. What's the name of that cartoon of the unicorns? Which cartoon? Cartoon of unicorns. A very good one. Cute one. I don't know. <laughs> um, cartoon unicorns. Oh, sorry. Fingerling Tales. No, not this name. This name is bad. <laughs> Unicorn. A very boring name. Unicorn name. If you... Sure. Perfect. Okay. We can always change that later. <laughs> yes. Let's so... not get too creative right now. Okay. So we can see the CLI generated a project for us. It installed, it installed all the dependencies that you need and gave us some next steps. So we can just follow those. Okay, next steps. Uh, we created a project, installed. We can run dev and also build. Let's first- Yeah, let's uh, play around. Run. See what dev does. Dart frog run. Oops. Dev. <laughs> Sorry. All I'm good. Creepy. I'm creepy. I have the documentation right here in my, in my face. <laughs> no, it's all good. So you can see we just got a bunch of output for uh, the dev tools and that we're also running on localhost 8080. So why don't we check out localhost 8080? And I don't know if everyone can see that, but we do have our hello world application, basically. So everything seems like it's working. Um, maybe we should pop into... Android Studio or VS Code and take a look at uh, Studio. Let's see this. This works fine. Yeah, it's open as my different desktop here. Good. Sweet. Presentation yes. loads. Good. Nice. Awesome. So yeah, let's take a look at uh, the structure of what was generated when we ran Dart Frog Create. So I think everyone's probably familiar if you're working with Flutter and Dart with like the pubspec.yaml. So maybe we can start there uh, and take a look at okay. what dependencies. <laughs> okay, so an important thing is every project as Flutter is, uh, as, of, as that's the case for Flutter, uh, every project, every Dart Frog project is also uh, Dart uh, package. package yeah, right? yeah that's a good call out. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it. Okay, it's nice. So we have Mocktail test, regular analysis here. Yep, and, and just one dependency, which is that Dart Frog package. So that's the only thing that we really have as a runtime dependency. Yeah, and I think routes is probably the next thing that we should jump to. So Okay, so we don't have a lib, we have a routes. That's interesting. Yes. yes. There is no lib, there is just routes. And routes, um, so the way Dartfrog works is the API routes are based on the file system. So the structure of your uh, routes folder will determine what endpoints are exposed by your server. So in this case, we only have one route that's index.dart that's at the top level. So that's why when you just hit localhost 8080, um, this handler is uh, invoked. And that's where we get the welcome to Dartfrog. So every uh, request handler um, or route handler is just one function that's called on request. And we are given a request context and we have to return a response. I think one thing that's uh, important to note is this does not have to be synchronous. It can also be async. 
So yeah, maybe let's start the dev server again, and then maybe let's refactor this to be um, mm -hmm. async, uh, just to show like what that could look like. Yep. Yes. And then we can return a future. Yep. And uh, I have to enable back support here. Okay. Yeah. Easier. Response. Yeah. Right. So, so this is exactly the same. We can see in the bottom in the terminal that uh, hot reload is enabled and the application reloaded. So we should be able to uh, make sure that everything is still running in the browser um, by going mm -hmm. to localhost 8080. Yep. And then why don't we try updating the message? Maybe let's say like, welcome to the unicorn name API, whatever we call this. <laughs> it's a very creative name. Yep. Very good name. And then if you save, we should be able to hot reload and refresh. Oops. Uh, should I? I think you can just refresh. Different... Yeah, just refresh. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah. Sweet. So yeah, so everything looks like it's hooked up where we have a basic route handler um, for the root route. I think um, that's kind of like what you get out of the box. Maybe let's jump to the tests and take a look at the tests that our project comes with, because it does come with some tests. Um, so we pretty much have your typical uh, Dart test structure. So there's no special dependencies here. It's just using the uh, package test. Um, and since everything is just functions, we're able to import our route. Um, and then we're able to just call on request, and then we can pass a mock uh, request context, and then just do our assertions as expected. I'm not sure why you have errors in your... Because it's async now? Ah, yes, good call. So we should refactor this test, yes. And then we probably have to change our expectation on line 19, because we're no longer re returning uh, welcome to dark oh, front. Okay. <laughs> Unicorn name API. Yes. Welcome the, wait, that's a bad English. Welcome, <laughs> Welcome <to> the. <laughs> <laughs> this problem is the link doesn't, can, cannot help us. Okay. Yep. And then if we run this test, everything should hopefully pass. And someone asked a good question. Um, does this return a JSON response? So we can take a look at that next. Uh, so tests are passing, that's awesome. So the way we have this right now, it's just returning a string response, um, but you can return JSON just by using the JSON named constructor on response. Oh, so you really? can change response to response.json. And now our body needs to be an object that will be JSON encoded. So you can pass a map. So it's like the JSON-like thing, right? Mm -hmm, oh, mm -hmm. this is the oh, GitHub <laughs> copilot in action. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, so you yeah, can just throw something in there. Yep. And then this. if we save and try maybe switch back. Yeah. Oof. Nice. We have some JSON. And you have a nice plugin, it looks like, to view the JSON. It's Firefox. <laughs> Firefox for the win. Cool. So so yeah, you can basically uh return JSON, you can return plain text, um, you can customize uh as needed and use the correct response object. And uh, you can also use the default response constructor in JSON and code the body yourself if you want to, but this is just a convenience uh, method. And there's also, mm -hmm. yeah, bytes constructor. So um, those are just some helpers, but uh, nice. under the hood, everything is just using shelf. So if you're used to using shelf, this should probably feel very familiar. So uh, now that we have a, a route handler and we've taken a look how we can convert that to between sync and async, and we can also return JSON and strings. I think maybe the next thing we can do is uh, create some middleware. Oof. What do you think? Okay, and the root? Yeah, let's let's just start with the root middleware. So maybe let's talk about what is middleware, first of all. Okay, uh, so let's ref back to the yeah. documentation. Okay, so we can create roots, yada, yada. We saw this, some requests with mm -hmm. different status codes, JSON. Um, okay, but middleware, what the hell is middleware? Yeah, what is middleware? So basically, um, think of middleware as something that sits in between your uh, route handlers, and you can do things either before or after they execute. And they're really handy for things like if you want to blog, 
for example, all of the um, traffic that's hitting your server and you want to see what the responses are for all the different requests that are being made, if you want to validate headers, if you want to redirect, uh, if you want to, um, yeah, pretty much anything that you want to do, um, either before or after, you can write middleware um, to do. And uh, I think one thing to note is, depending on where the middleware is in your routes directory, it will affect the sub route. So if we have middleware that's at the top level, it will run for every uh, request that's made. So why don't we go ahead and uh, create some middleware. We can just create a top level underscore middleware dot dart okay. file. Underscore middleware, right? Yep, dart. dot dart, yep. And okay. this is just a function that uh, returns a handler and accepts a handler. So, okay. Can... So basically, a handler. Yep. Something. Uh, it should and, be middleware. Yeah. Should yeah. be the name should be middleware, but we got, yeah. can get that in a minute. Oof, that's not that's not <laughs> what I want. Copilot wanted. tried its best. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I have to deactivate Copilot. Handler, handler, handler. Okay. And you have it's dark FI me now. sometimes. <laughs> Uh, Dart FI, amazing, beautiful, thanks. Um, something in the meantime, do... middleware are like uh, interceptors. You can think of them. So um, you can, yeah, basically uh, execute whatever code you want before or after uh, your route handlers fire, and you have access to the request and the response. Um, so you can pretty much do whatever you need to do at that point. So yeah, so basically, I think the simplest way to get started with middleware is you can use the use API. So right now, the middleware that you wrote, Hanan, just does nothing. It just proxies all the calls to the handlers. Um, but we can take advantage of a built-in piece of middleware that comes with Dartfrog, um, which is called the request logger. Yeah, you can also add some print statements here. <laughs> so I'm a one, one and name a unicorn. <laughs> Yeah, you should, you should be able to now make a request and we should be able to, if you have the dev server still running. In here. So, did this print? You're viewing oh. test output though, yeah. Oh, okay, now again. Mission reloaded, it's not. Is this correct? You save, it should be, yeah, middleware. Yeah, okay. Did save. Yep, try it again. <laughs> Ooh, not working. Doing Anything? a logger or something like that? To print maybe uh, maybe try well let's let's just continue and see what's going on. Uh, okay. I was gonna say the thing we could do is we could use the use API on handler. So you oh. can apply middleware uh, to your handler by calling dot use. So we can do handler dot use. Uh, and then one piece of built-in middleware that we have is the request logger. So you can just pass the request logger. So you can just do request logger. Um, um, all right. So request logger. Do we have a, an example of this in the document? Yeah, it should be in the should be in the readme. Um, yep. In the, in the request logger. This. Yep. Exactly. Beautiful. And and that's just a, another handler. So Good. you're just chaining handlers. Amazing. Shelf, uh, shelf log yep. request. That's amazing. Yep. So we're just proxying. Um, and now let's try hitting the server again and see. We might have to restart. Maybe it's oh. freaking out. Okay. And uh, in the meantime, Marcus is asking, is middleware a good solution for authentication logic? Um, yeah, I think that's a, a good place to validate um, authorization uh, to whatever endpoints you're trying to hit and uh, potentially returning like a 403, 401, whatever, if the, if the request is not authorized or authenticated to access whatever resources you want. So middleware is a great place to do things like that. And it looks like we're working now. So uh, nice. we have some logs. So that's pretty cool. Maybe let's jump over to the route and maybe let's return a different status code uh, okay. in index.dart and verify that everything is working. So by default, it's a 200, but Okay. So do we have a helper or something like that, or just another? Yeah, you should be able to do HTTP status from Dart IO. Oh, yep. good. And then not okay. Do like, uh, <laughs> no content not found. Anything, good. yeah, not found sounds good. And then let's application reloaded. 
Let's see. Uh, how can I see this here? You can just go to the logs, I guess, <laughs> or okay. in the networking tab. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Just confirm if the the call call got uh, 404 here. Yeah. Nice. Good. Nice, good. Nice. Good. 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 And we should see that in our logs as well. Yeah. So we're getting 404. Sweet. So mm -hmm. we have some basic middleware, um, and we have now uh, a starting point to start, I guess, building our unicorn endpoint, um, right? So maybe let's create a new, we have to mm -hmm. think about what do we want our endpoint to look like for getting uh, unicorn names? Get name? I don't know. Just, just get name? Okay, cool. Yeah. So what we can do is, yeah, just create a new Dart file, call it name. Dot, dart. Dart, dart file here. Get unicorn. Well, Good. do we want the endpoint to be get underscore oh, unicorn? No, I don't. What know. do we want? The, what do we want the endpoint to be called? <laughs> we can yeah. probably call it. Um, I, I guess we can just create like a unicorn directory. Yeah, like you're doing, and then just create yeah. a an index uh, dot dart inside, Good. so that if anyone tries to do a get on the unicorn. In the meantime, we have another question on the body of the response object. Can you supply a custom Dart class? Yes, that's a great question. If you use something like JSON serializable, uh, for example, and uh, auto generate the to and from JSON serialization code, then you can just pass uh, like my custom class dot to JSON to the uh, response body. And then you're working with more strongly typed uh, APIs and you don't have to just pass maps all over the place. And we also have another question on WebSockets and gRPC support. Um, we'll talk about roadmap probably towards the end, uh, but those are things that we have discussed potentially adding in the future. Um, but as of now, we're still working on some uh, more like foundational topics. And uh, HTML templating as well. That's something that uh, should be possible via like external libraries that are built on top of Dartfrog. But at the moment, we're trying to keep the core API pretty simple and lightweight. So um, yeah, at the moment, that is not something that's built in. Um, but yeah, these are all good questions. We'll talk more about roadmap towards the end. So now we have a new request handler. Um, and yeah, why don't we just make sure that this is working properly? <laughs> good. Uh, async, what's going on here? Oof. Uh, this was some uh, some uh, yes, you're using, you're using cold pilot <laughs> suggestions, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Now he got it right. Nice. So okay. yeah, we can return to something. Let's just make sure that our unicorn endpoint is working. Okay. Hello world. Two hundred. That's just Oof. redundant, so that's why it's yelling, but it's okay. So now we can do slash unicorn. Route not found. Unicorn. Did unicorn. we save? We did index dot dot. Is everything? Yes. Hmm. Um, should try, we restart? Yeah, try restart. I guess. Yeah. Wait. I don't know. That... Got it. Should. Should have picked it up. Yeah. Help. Again, this is why it's still experimental. Um, so. Good. Now we have hello world. Sweet. Um, so we can. Uh, mm. Yeah, you can adjust that. Um, one other thing that I think is worth mentioning is by default, all uh, route handlers get triggered on any request. So right now, these are all get requests. But if you sent a post request, for example, to slash unicorn, it would still come to our uh, on request function here. And you have access to the type of uh, HTTP method that's being used via the request context. So you might be wondering, like, what is this context object? Um, you can access the current request uh, via context.request. Mm, Context.request. Yep. yep. And if you save that as, uh, yeah, or you can jump into what the request object is. Um, okay. That gives us access to. Best. Um, yeah, that nice. gives us access to things like uh, the absolute URI that was used, the HTTP method that's used, the headers, the body. Um, so one thing that you could do is in our route handler, for example, you could do a switch on um, 
context dot request dot method. Okay. Yep. Copilot was suggesting the same thing. Yep. And this is <laughs> a enum that's of type uh, HTTP method. So for example, you can do case HTTP method dot get. Okay. Yeah. Copilot's trying. <laughs> yeah. It's trying hard. Yeah. And you can basically in this way, you can handle returning um, different responses for different HTTP methods. We also have a proposal currently um, where we're looking for feedback actually from the community about how to uh, support alternative ways of registering route handlers for specific HTTP methods so that you don't have to do a switch statement. Um, so take a look at the issues on the Dark Frog repo um, if you want to provide some feedback or take a look at the proposal. But yeah, this is one way that you could handle different types of um, HTTP methods. Uh, so Anyway, let's go back to what we were doing. So we want our endpoint to return a random unicorn name, right? Okay. So maybe so. we should create a separate uh, class to generate the random unicorn name, right? And then okay. we can show how you can uh, use DI to provide that class. The unicorn name. Check the box for next streams. Deactivate GitHub Copilot. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, what do we think about this? Uh, the API for this, we have like a, I don't know a list, an internal list of names, and then we just keep yeah, yeah. We can start a... simple. We can just have a couple. Yeah, we can have a couple of names internally yeah, yeah. and just pick a random one. Okay. Good, 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 good. So first of all, most important, the names. Uh, yes. String. Unicorn names to be like, you no, know, um, mm -hmm. we already have one here, which is Bloomy. Woo. <laughs> nice co pilot, <laughs> Rainbow Dash. Perfect. Uh, in the meantime, Alberto is asking, What kind of libraries can we use? I'm thinking database connection support. So, since this is just a Dart project, you can use any Dart libraries from pub.dev already. Um, everything should be fully compatible. For example, you can use the Postgres um, library if you want to establish a connection to a Postgres uh, database or uh, pretty much whatever already exists out there from the Dart ecosystem. So there's nothing special about this project. And um, yeah, in terms of database connections and how you approach them, um, that's something that we are not focusing on at the moment, but um, we, yeah, we can try to, if you have questions, maybe open an issue uh, and we can try to provide some suggestions or recommendations. But again, any library that already works in like an existing shelf um, backend should be totally fine uh, with a Dart Frog project as well. And there's nothing really special going on here. Dart Frog is just handling building the um, the web server for you and routing everything. Otherwise, it's really up to you what you use to establish database connections. Good questions from everyone. Nice. Next int, max, unicorn names, Oof, nice, cool. nice. Pilot's coding really nice now. <laughs> um, okay. Just need to return. Uh, yeah, exactly. Names. And one thing we should do is um, let's maybe pull this uni random unicorn name class out of this route. Oh, good. And then let's maybe put it somewhere outside of routes because it's not really a routing logic right so let's maybe create a lib, a lib. folder yeah like you're used to oh mm -hmm. now and... oh, this is a file sorry uh <laughs> now this looks like a, a dark package yep we're getting closer <laughs> and then yeah we can create a source folder or even just put it in the top level it doesn't really matter uh, yeah. at this point it's just typical dart structure Good. Index, not, not test, sorry. Not the test. Proof random unicorn name. Yeah, that's a bad class name. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have a question. Tested on Windows machine while I restart the server. Uh, it slows down my machine. Uh, again, this is why it's still in an experimental stage. Windows support, we recently added. 
Um, so I'm sure there's still optimizations we can make. I think the most helpful thing to do is uh, open an issue and try to provide some reproduction steps and information about the machine that you're running on um, and maybe take a look at like the process explorer and try to uh, provide as much information as you can. Like if there are any rogue processes that are still running that are not being killed properly, uh, it would be super helpful the more information you can provide, but definitely just open an issue when you encounter things like that. And maybe a question for you, Hanan. Uh, time to write backends for games <laughs> in Dart. <laughs> yeah, that, that's really tied to the questions about gRPC or WebSockets yeah. because yeah. most games, uh, game backends are real time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's something that's uh, under the discussion of uh, WebSockets and gRPC. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Anyway, so uh, we created the unicorn names in lib. Yeah. So why don't we now uh, provide this this unicorn name? So so we need to figure out how are we going to access that unicorn names class from within our route handler. And one way you can do that is you can provide things um, via middleware. So if we go into Ooh. our underscore middleware dot dart, um, there's yeah, another piece just... of middleware. Yeah, it's just called like a block for the backend. <laughs> yeah, just like block. Well, it's more like a provider. So you can do use again to add another piece of middleware. And we have a pre built one called provider. And right provider takes a type. So in this case, our type is going to be unicorn names. Unicorn, random unicorn names. Random unicorn names. Yep. And then it takes uh, a create function. It's uh, it's named. Is it named or not? I think it's not. I think it's just an anonymous function uh, that takes the context. So we have a request context. Um, yes, yeah, just need it. Takes a context here. Yep, yep. In case you need to depend on other things, so your oh, that's thing you're providing could potentially also look up other things that have already been provided. So now we have middleware that is providing uh, instance of this random unicorn name. This uh, is only created when it's. Uh, accessed, so we won't actually create the random unicorn name instance until it's used somewhere. So that's something to keep in mind. It's lazy, um, and now we can access that in our route handler uh, by doing context dot read. Mm. So we can do unicorn handler equals. Yeah. Well, we can we can do it inline, or you can create a variable. Maybe create a variable would be easier to follow. Okay. Yeah. Unicorn name context. Dot read. Dot read. Yep. And that takes the generic type that we're trying to access. Good. Unicorn. Random unicorn. Name. Yep. So now we have the instance of the, yeah, and we can call it get name. Perfect. <laughs> and yeah, I guess you can also remove the switch statement since we're always returning the same thing yeah. for now. But yeah. If you want us to return different things. <laughs> and it's going to be hard to emulate that in the browser unless we go first. Yeah, so. yeah. Simulate a request here. OK, we don't need the request anymore. So let's see. Clean now up. if we hit our endpoint. That's the time of truth. Applejack, Applejack, Applejack Rainbow, Blue Me, Rainbow, Rainbow Dash. Dash. Woo. <laughs> nice. Nice. Good, good, good. We have Dominic. Do you have? Uh, do you plan to have some kind of ORM as well? So that's something that we are also uh, have talked about a bit, and um, there it seems like are many projects in the community that are working on ORM support. Uh, so as of now, we're trying to keep it like as lightweight as possible. ORMs are something that can easily be built on top, um, and also they're non-trivial to implement, especially when you want to start supporting many different databases. Um, so for now, um, it's not in the core, uh, it's not in the plans to do like as a core library as like first party support. Uh, but it's definitely something that we're open to collaborating with uh, the community on to start supporting uh, different ORMs. And uh, yeah, hopefully there'll be more exciting news on that in the future. We have another question. Uh, what Dart Frog is to backend dev who never worked with Dart, what comparison can we give? Is it Django of Dart? Uh, I would think of it more as like, I mean, you can think of it as like Django or Flask, but it's more minimalistic. It's more like uh, Express or uh, something like 
a lot simpler. Like you usually uh, get a lot of other opinionated things from larger web frameworks. So ORM is a good example. Um, caching, migration support, all that, all that stuff. Um, and really the core thing that Dartfrog is focusing right now is making it as easy as possible to build um, web APIs, uh, like as a developer, make that experience uh, as seamless as possible so that you're just creating files. You don't have to set up a bunch of boilerplate to create your server. You have hot reload um, and all these other things can be built on top in a more modular way so that if you care about all these other things, you can add them eventually as the ecosystem grows. But if you don't care about them and maybe you just want a simple microservice that's uh, aggregating data from multiple places and then normalizing it and then returning it, then you don't care about ORMs and you don't care about all these other things. You can just have a really simple um, implementation of that with just one dependency. Um, so that's kind of the goal is to build something that you can expand upon as needed, but you don't have to get all these things out of the box if you don't really need them. Try to keep the core as simple as possible. Um, cool. So where are we? We have mm. the endpoint working. How are we on time? We still have 25 yes. minutes. So I think we can maybe write some tests. What do you think? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, we can write some tests or, I don't know, more middlewares or dynamic or routes that takes arguments or stuff like that. Yeah, actually, why don't we take a look at dynamic routes? That's a good point. So um, right now our routes are just hard-coded, right? Like we can go to slash unicorn, uh, but let's say we wanted to go to unicorn slash any ID. name or ID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how can we do that? We can create another Dart file like you're about to do. Okay, new file. And then the way that you specify dynamic routes is using the square brackets. So you can do square, square brackets. brackets. Yep. And then ID, ID or name. Yep. Dot dart. Can I compose like yada yada? Yes. Yes. ID? Oh, yes. It will match. Yeah. So if I have a route for like users, just like, for example, medium, and you have mm -hmm. like a, the at in the beginning, that mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. work fine, right? Yeah. It should match. Yeah. Um, and the key thing to note when you have a dynamic route is you can copy maybe the request handler from any other one. But the key thing is now on request also takes a second parameter for the, um, the, the dynamic uh, route param. So here we can pass a string ID and that will be whatever is matched. So maybe we can adjust the response of this one to just return like hello and then ID or something. Just make sure that we're getting the ID properly. Unicorn names. <laughs> okay. Hello, or yeah, ID. that works. <laughs> we don't have an ID, uh, but yeah. Um, the ID yeah, is basically no the name for us. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah, basically the name. Unicorn, Unicorn. So yeah, let's, let's go for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see if this works. So this is just, again, for the sake of example. This endpoint probably is not that useful, but now we can do like hi. Or, yeah, perfect. So now we're matching on the ID that is passed. An ID is anything, uh, anything that's matched uh, will get assigned to that string ID variable, and then you have access to it in your handler. So you can have dynamic routes. Uh, you can have static routes. You can also have, like, the folder can be dynamic. So, for example, rather than unicorn, we could have called it animal or something or, like, creature. And, and put that in square brackets, and then you can have nested routes within there. We, we don't have to go crazy complicated on this example, yeah. but just to show people what you can uh, do. It's we have a question about the concurrency issue. I'm not sure what that is referring to, uh, but at the moment, um, in terms of concurrency, everything is running just on the main isolate. You can always spin up uh, or spawn separate isolates if you want to perform expensive tasks, but everything is just built on top of shelf at the moment, and we're not doing anything fancy um, with um, multi-threading. Dominic is asking, can I generate Swagger or Postman documentation? Not yet, uh, but it is on the roadmap. That's one of the uh, things that we want to work on in the near future is supporting uh, documentation generation as well as Dart API client generation. So for example, um, it would be really nice if we could take this unicorn names API and automatically generate a unicorn names API client that's just a Dart package. 
And you can use that to basically interface with the API without having to manually create the HTTP request, send the HTTP request, deserialize the response, all that stuff. Um, so the documentation generation and API client generation are two big things that we want to try to tackle in the near future. And Marcus has a question on middleware. So if we're adding multiple middleware, which order are they executed? So again, since this is built on shelf, it's just the same uh, principle as shelf uses. So all of them get executed in the order in which they're registered on the way in. So the request goes through all of them first, and then the response goes back up. So you can think of it as like the very first middleware that's registered will get called first um, when the request comes in, but it will get called last when the response is leaving um, the server. So that's important to keep in mind. If we had multiple, in this case, we do have multiple middleware. So request logger will get called first with the request and last with the response, uh, whereas the provider will get called second with the request and first um, with the response. So just keep that in mind when you're registering middleware, because it could matter, uh, especially if you have multiple providers that are accessing parent uh, dependencies, you have to keep that in mind. Yeah, for example, here, I know th this isn't the root, but if you had a middleware mm -hmm. in, in the, in the subfolders. Yes, and... then both would get called. Yeah, if we created yeah. another uh, piece can of middleware. Read in... Yes, here? you can. Yeah, you can. You can do context.read. Uh, you have to do it. You have to do it in the function, right? That's the parameter. So you change the arrow function to uh, like a block, maybe. Yep. Block and then body. here you can do context .read. Yeah. Oh yeah, I was totally tripping there. <laughs> no, uh, you're good. Read. Okay. Good. Yes. So if you had other things that were provided somewhere upstream, you could access them, and then you can create a new dependency that you inject further down. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good question. Keep that in mind, though. Uh, they get executed in order for the incoming request and then in reverse for the response. Um, so it just depends on what your middleware uh, is designed to do. But yeah. Um, shall we talk about tests then? We can switch back to maybe create a test for our, our main endpoint, our okay. unicorn endpoint. Oh, yeah. We are still returning my phone here. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> and we're also returning JSON now. Yeah. <laughs> so what you can do is you can uh, expect a response.json instead of response.body on line oh, 18. Oh, good. And then uh, you can do equals and then pass the expected map okay, but on what line if, 19. What if we are returning not a JSON and, uh, and then I expect a JSON? Does this affect the validity of this test? Can you elaborate? For example, mm -hmm. um, let's see if in this on request here we are returning just a string. Uh, a string. Yeah, then that yeah. will that will fail because it will try to JSON decode something that's okay. well, actually yeah it will it will try to JSON decode. So response.json will throw and then that test will fail. Good. We have another question about uh, proto buff. Uh, again, I think that's in the same category uh, that we talked about with like sockets, gRPC, protobuf, GraphQL. Uh, these are all things that are beyond the scope of the core uh, library at the moment. But if it's something that you think would be really useful for you or your team, definitely create an issue uh, and provide some context around like what exactly um, you'd want the support to look like. And then we're more than happy to figure out how to support that as a community. Because I think the, the main thing is a lot of these th requests can be added as external libraries that just integrate nicely. Um, is there an easy way to add HTTPS? Uh, yes, it should, uh, be, it should be similar to, like it, for example, if you're deploying the server to Cloud Run, right now the dev server is just running on HTTP on localhost, but, and we haven't even looked at production builds yet, but we can maybe look at that after if we have time. Um, once you do a production build, uh, you can deploy that anywhere you want, really. So, for example, if you wanted to deploy to Cloud Run, uh, because we generate a Docker file for you, you can deploy to Cloud Run, and you'll have HTTPS support out of the box. Um, but there's nothing special, um, really. You can you can just configure this like you would any other server. And since it's using Shelf under the hood, it's all the same. Um, but the dev server is running on HTTP for obvious reasons. So, good question. Um, 
Where are we? We're writing tests. Yes, we're writing tests. You're going to have uh, to test random. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? You're going to have to test math.random. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so we have this thing here for the, the random. Right? Ah, yes, yes. And get we're going to mock name, the, get yeah, we're gonna mock the dependency. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So how do we mock something and put it in the context? Yes. So we can create a mock context. Oh, a context. Okay. Yep. Mock and then context. And mock. It's not context, right? It's a uh... Uh, request context. Yeah. Yep. And then you can import mock tail. And um, we can also now create a mock, um, whatever it was called, random unicorn name. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we will try to touch on deploying a Dart prog server towards the very end, but that could be a whole topic for another live stream. Actually, like doing a full deployment uh, to something like Cloud Run. If people are interested in that, just leave some comments below, let us know, and we can try to organize a separate live stream to go more in depth on deployments. Um, cool. So now we have the mocks. So uh, let's also import the route. So similar cool. to the original test. Okay. We can just import the route that we want and yeah, give it a name if you want. Yeah, makes I think makes things easier. So go back one, go back two, routes, right? Unicorn index as <laughs> route. Come on, come on. <laughs> what is it complaining about? Maybe three? Is it two? One more, I think. There we go. Um, and so now we can call route dot on request. Yep. And we need to give it a mock context. So let's create one. Yep. Thanks, Copilot. <laughs> Thank you, Copilot. And we can also, um, yeah. And we can also now mock the read. So you can do when request context dot read Request context read of type of, uh, yeah and shout out to Henan for adding support for generics to mocktail we wouldn't be able to do this <laughs> otherwise oh yeah <laughs> I mean, so, it would be, you would be able to do that. Yeah, but... yeah. It wouldn't be <laughs> as strict. Yeah. <laughs> but it would be like one mock of one read yeah. at a time. Two providers would break the thing. Uh, then return. Uh, yeah, we can take what Copilot suggesting. Yep. So now uh, we can mock uh, what random unicorn name returns. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Get name. Good. Care off. Yep. Unicorn name. Expect. And no we can uh, await that. Yeah. I know. It's uh, I think yet. Yeah. Awesome. And a route. A route. Yeah. <laughs> a route. Okay, response. We all know that response is a thing. Let's just validate the same thing. Yep. Like status code and yada yada yada. Yep. Yeah, we don't care that true is true. We want to know that it's a 200. And I think it's just a string, right? So it's not response.json. Yeah. It's just body. Just body, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Completion equals. And this would be. Unicorn name. Nice. So Let's if see. everything works properly, Whew, hey, that never class. happens in the real life. <laughs> the class is the same. In the, the awesome. first trial. So you can Good. see how you can mock uh, the dependencies that you're accessing in your route handler, and you can verify uh, really without any new APIs. It's all just using existing packages uh, to do that. So it's pretty uh, simple to write unit tests for all this. I think since we're almost out of time, maybe we should look at production builds quickly mm -hmm. and like what that looks like. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. 
Finish this. And again, so, like when we say production builds, we mean quote unquote production builds because this is still experimental. So don't deploy this to actual production. Um, but yeah, you can use the Dart Frog build command. And what that will do is it will try to generate a build directory that has um, your production uh, version of your application ready to deploy. So you see we have a build folder. Um, we have a Docker file, which is new, that's generated for you. So we can take a look here. Uh, you can see that it's using the base Dart image on the current stable version of Dart. Um, and it's generating uh, it's generating a nice image that's listening on port 8080 with our entry point, which is in bin slash server. Uh, so there's nothing fancy here. It's all just regular Dart code under the hood uh, that you can run. And you can see in the terminal even, it's telling you um, that you can run Dart build bin server.dart. So if you copy that command and run it, that should also start running our server. It's not running in Docker. We're just running it manually. Um, but you should be able to go to your browser and make sure that our endpoint is still working. AD. Yep. And Best. we can check that our unicorn endpoint is also working. Oof. Did we Oof. get rid of that one? <laughs> no, we have a... It's, it's not ID. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. the index uh, of the thing. Yeah, we you should have to implement index. like the... Validation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then let's check the... Is the unicorn one still working? Yeah, yes. awesome. So we had a random one. So um, what you could do now is after running this, this build command, you could just deploy uh, this to Cloud Run. We can do that maybe in a separate, uh, in a separate live stream. Yeah. And any reason you generate an executable versus running with Dart Run? Uh, we, we don't generate an executable, actually. We're, we are just uh, generating an entry point that you can run using Dart Run. Uh, so it's all human readable Dart code at the moment that you can take a look at. You can generate an executable if you want to compile it. Um, but yeah, we don't actually generate one by default. Um, maybe that's something that we could explore if there's enough interest. Um, one other thing I think that's worth noting that uh, we kind of glossed over is if you start up the dev server one more time. So uh, we're going to leave the production builds uh, go back to dev server and you'll notice this is where my lack of Android studio knowledge is going to come in to play, but, uh, you'll notice that we get a dev tools debugger URL here. So mm. and do you know, how do you, is there an easy way in Android studio to attach a debugger to oh, an existing process? You got me. <laughs> you got uh, me like uh, out of my mind, uh, like on top of my mind. No, um, I don't remember. <laughs> try clicking, try clicking on the. Uh, URL because you can do it in your browser as well. But uh, for example, in VS Code, there's an easy way to attach to VS Code directly, so you can debug within VS Code. Okay, um, so guide me. <laughs> oh yeah, if you have VS Code, yeah. Um, I have this, I never use it. Okay, yeah. So if you uh, run Oops. or maybe open the um, open via the terminal, yeah. Yeah, maybe open via terminal in this project. Oh. <laughs> I have to go to the path, right? What yeah. what's the shortcuts? Uh path, uh path, path. I think it's uh in VS Code there's a command. If you do like the greater command P greater than in VS Code and then do like shell. Oh. I guess it's done. Yeah, so try it. Also, uh, we have a question about how performance compares to other frameworks. Again, this is experimental, so we haven't optimized for performance or anything, but you can expect the performance to be very similar to Shelf because it is built on top of Shelf. We do have an issue open right now about adding benchmarks, and I ran some preliminary benchmarks on my machine using Apache benchmark, uh, so you can take a look. Uh, if you're curious, and also feel free to just install Dart Frog on your own machine create a production build, and then use whatever benchmarking software you like and run some benchmarks. And you can also comment on that issue uh, with your findings. We are working on generating um, uh, benchmarks automatically. Oh, are you already running in a different uh, terminal? I, I think it's already Indeed. running. It's already running. Oh, uh, it's somewhere. I don't somewhere, know. yeah. Oh, you yeah, can do... on the on right <laughs> studio. Probably. Oh, yeah. Kill yeah. Android Studio and then... 
How do I open the terminal on VS Code? I, I never use this edge there. This uh, edge there. I think you can do Control tilde if you have that key. Otherwise, you can just click on the bottom left corner uh, where the like X and triangle are. Bottom left corner. Yeah, next to where it says restricted mode to the right. Yeah, if you click on those, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then you can switch to terminal. Oh, that's, yeah. uh, that's good. That's a good but shortcut. there's a shortcut with tilde. Uh, I guess you have to trust. Yeah. Okay, so now what you can do is you can run the dev server uh, really quickly here. And we're almost out of time. But I think it's useful okay. to show this. Like frog. Dev. dev. Space dev. Yeah. And, yep. So now you can copy that URL. Um, this one? the second one, not the VM okay. service, the Dart Dev Tools one. Yeah. And if you press Command P, I hope you can copy. <laughs> and if you press Command P, uh, greater than sign, and then uh, uh, attach. Yeah, attach to Dart process Ooh. and paste. But crucially, uh, yeah. This is what I've noticed. Uh, crucially, that's a. I think this is a bug in the URL that gets generated or in the dev tools. Try that again, um, but don't paste the exact URL. You have to tweak it slightly, which is annoying. Um, yeah, so do that and then paste, but then don't press enter and delete the little hashtag. You see the fragment? It mm -hmm. doesn't like that. Yeah, just do two backspaces. Yeah, one more and then enter. Wow. Yeah. So now the debugger is attached, so you can set a breakpoint anywhere in your code like you normally would. So maybe set it in the route handler, set it in like get name. Okay, uh, I guess get name is a good yeah. one, right? Yeah, and then you can make a request. So maybe hit it from your browser. Browser again. Good localhost. Yep. And then now we're on a breakpoint, so you can debug your code just like you normally would. We're, we'll work on making this easier so that you don't have to manually paste that URL and delete that uh, fragment from the URL. But in the meantime, I think it's worth calling out that you can uh, debug just like you normally do. There is no Dart Frog extension. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. Yet. Uh, Yet. But yeah, that's that's something that uh, maybe we'll have in the future. We'll see. But just keep in mind that you can leverage the existing dev tools, uh, set breakpoints, inspect values, um, all that stuff. So you have your same tooling that you're used to uh, when you're writing a Flutter application. Awesome. Right. And Scarlett is here to tell us that we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll be ending the live stream. There was one question toward the beginning that I do want to make sure we covered. It was kind of random, but somebody was wondering what terminal emulator you're using. Uh, yeah. yes. uh, okay, this terminal is called Warp. It's made with in Rust. So nice. it's very fast. So Google nice. that. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, and it does look like there's some interest in another live stream about deployments. So maybe we'll think about doing that. Um, but this is a really good question to end on. Shout out to Marcus. Um, yeah, thanks, Marcus. People want to get involved. What's the best way to help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we didn't have time to look at the roadmap. But if you take a look at the Dart Frog uh, repo, it's under very good open source on GitHub. Maybe we can drop the link. Um, but there is a roadmap. I'll that that link, but somewhere. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can. If you go to the GitHub uh, repository from pub.dev, there's a roadmap. So you can take a look at the roadmap for types of things that we are planning on working on soon. Um, so you can see, like Dominic asked about open API documentation generation. It's on the roadmap. We have a Dart API client generation. We have um, WebSocket support that we mentioned. Um, and we will continue to refine this roadmap, VS Code IntelliJ support. Um, so. If you don't see something on the roadmap and you think it would be really useful for your team or a project that you're working on, please just create a feature request. Just open an issue, mark it as a feature request, and provide as much information as possible. If you have like examples of existing tools that do something similar that you really like uh, or like an API that you wish you could use, um, try to share as much information as possible, and then we can discuss if we all agree that it makes sense to support it as part of the core uh, Dart Frog library, then um, because it's open source, anyone can contribute and open a pull request. Um, but also a lot of these things, I think we'll probably be able to maintain as separate packages and then just have them uh, integrate nicely so that everything is modular. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity to contribute. Uh, also, we'll be working on documentation improvements in the future. So we'll have hopefully like a proper doc site 
uh, with some more examples and, and sample apps that you can take a look at to get started. So I'm sure we'll need plenty of help keeping that up to date and making the docs as, as uh, good as possible. So there's many ways to contribute, but I think um, if you have feature requests, don't hesitate to open an issue. And if you find bugs, like someone was mentioning, Windows performance issues, again, please open issues. The more issues, uh, the better, uh, because we can try to fix all of these um, as quickly as possible and uh, try to improve the quality for everyone. All right, great. Thank you both, Hannah and Felix. Um, if you're looking for more information on DartProd, you can also <laughs> check out our blog, which was written by Felix, um, also walks you through how to get started. A couple of examples there. All right, well, see you all around. Maybe right on, on our next live stream, right on time. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone have a good Friday. Yeah, thanks for tuning in again, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks Hannah. Awesome.